we are going to begin our, our meeting now, and unfortunately, due to a broken cable that would take too long to repair, and I don't want to keep everybody waiting, the footage will be available on YouTube afterwards, but we won't be able to broadcast this on live stream as we usually do. Um, but I think in the interest of um, the time that people have taken to come here today, we should move ahead. So. Um, first on the agenda for today is the minutes from our meeting of November 28th. All in favor of adopting those minutes? And with that, those minutes are unanimously adopted. Uh, second is, we have base, we have no base. So today we have no base no base approvals. Um, We're going to have a vote on the driver income rules and then a vote on the high volume service rules. Um, and then there's some comments um, from commissioners on the testimony that we heard last week on the congestion fee implementation rules. Um, so I just want to speak briefly on the um, well, actually, let me first allow Chris to go through the mechanics of when it was published and the changes that were made. Thank you. So this, on the agenda this morning are rules providing for driver income protection for FHV drivers in certain least transparency requirements. These rules were published in the city record on August 28, 2018, with a comment deadline of September 28, 2018. A public hearing was held on these rules on October 3, 2018. Numerous public comments were received following the public hearing and as a result of staff comment, as a result of the public comments and testimony, the following changes were made to the final rule. Um, we changed the per mile rate for both waves and non-waves as a result of a broader review of driver expenses. We added a uniform rate of fare for all companies for all miles and minutes a driver spends transporting passengers outside New York City. We added an initial utilization rate for all companies for the first year that will be the aggregate rate for all bases subject to the driver payment rules. We updated the data requirements for bases subject to income rules to include GPS data, total miles driven, miles and minutes spent driving passengers outside the city, company, um, company forced log offs, itemized weekly earnings, and total hourly earnings for bases that pay by the hour. We added a manual annual evaluation by the commission of the driver payment rates. We added a section expanding the, um, the pool of wheelchair accessible taxis eligible for taxi improvement fund payments. And we eliminated the cap on certain payments to um, green drivers receiving accessible, accessible street hail livery grant payments. As local law requires, the final rule for commission action was posted on the commission's website on November 29th and sent to the commissioners on that date. Okay, all in favor of the driver income rules? I, and with that, they are um, passed with a vote of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in favor, and one in, no vote. And I'd like to uh, just say a few words. The reason why I'm voting no today is not because I don't think that drivers deserve a fair wage. Quite to the contrary. I've worked all my life, I've, I was a cashier, I've waited tables, I shampooed hair, I know how important it is to have a fair minimum wage. However, I don't think these rules, first of all, I don't think they go far enough. I wanted a flat uh, percentage of 80% of all fares go to the drivers. I was told uh, when this was brought up that that would not be fair. I was told that, th I was told that, that would not work out because of the app-based companies being able to undercut um, their fares. However, now there's proposed legislation in the city council to eliminate that possibility. So I think we should wait a month and see what happens with that legislation and revisit this rule and see if it is possible to make a flat rate 80% for the drivers. I also find these rules incredibly complicated. Frankly, I think I'm fairly intelligent. I can't even understand them. I'd rather see a rule that makes sense to me that I can understand. I've gotten way too much feedback from people um, in, in the industry, um, from drivers saying that, that the rules don't take into account the monthly expenses accurately, to um, companies saying that they give um, Uber an unfair advantage, which is the last thing I want to see. Um, 
there's just too many unanswered questions and unknown variables, in my opinion, to how this rule is drafted. Um, I would much rather see a flat rate that goes to the drivers and see what happens with um, Councilman Diaz's proposed legislation to eliminate the four um, the um, app-based companies from undercutting the regulated metered rules uh, metered uh, fares, which is why I'm voting no on these rules today. Okay, um, I'd I'd like to say a few comments, and I think others would. Um, and this is the beginning. Um, but I certainly know that people who work for a living don't want to continue to wait for improvements in their living wage in their wages. And so though a rule passed today is not the end, it is the beginning. There will be further improvements, there will be further additions, but there will be no more waiting. There will be no more waiting. Getting, getting things at the tap of a button is amazing. Products, transportation, food at our beck and call. But that convenience has cost, and today we are ensuring that at least in the case of app car service, that cost is not borne by the professional men and women who every day safely transport tens of thousands of passengers throughout the five boroughs, and it's our hope that other cities follow. And we are at the beginning. In August, City Council capped the number of cars to stop them from flooding our streets and diluting earnings. Also in August, Council required us to study what app passengers are paying and establish a minimum pay rate. We've already begun that work. Um, NITWA, for one, has advocated for this approach and their continued input, as well as the input of our commissioners and all drivers, will be extremely helpful in this process. Also pending is council legislation that would limit FHV leasings, just as today we limit taxi leasings. And there's more to be done for yellow taxi operators and drivers. Today, we're reducing the amount of credit card processing that a garage can charge, and in the future, we'll seek to do the same for those who interface directly with the TPAP providers. We'll continue to advocate for lenders to write down principles and modify loan terms, so many individual medallion owners who've been steadfast in their repayments for decades and banks have consistently profited from years of collecting refinancing fees. A few other changes that were made based on the advocacy of medallion owners and drivers and the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. We eliminated late charges, prohibit garages from collecting twice for repairs, once the insurer and once from the driver, mandated restitution for rules violations where the driver has suffered a monetary loss, and today we also increased the amount provided to drivers and owners of accessible taxis, green and yellow, and will continue to work to reduce operating expenses and increase income streams. How did we get here? With a lot of help. First, drivers themselves. One after the other, you came and you told us about your lowering pay. We held public hearings on the topic and they lasted the entire day. Drivers brought in receipts and shared their painful personal financial details. Advocates for drivers, the New York Taxi Workers Alliance, the Independent Drivers Guild, and all of their members have shown up for hearings and at council, and today their presence solidifies their commitment. These groups united their constituents to send us an urgent message and a need for change. Advocates for the disabled, thanks for your support and your work with drivers. Today's rules have a higher pay rate for drivers who drive accessible vehicles. The facts, they helped a lot. We ordered the companies to provide us with all the data we needed to analyze current pay and formulate for the future. Representing the first time a city has drawn the curtain back on the actual economics of this booming industry. And it wasn't pretty. 96% of drivers today make less than the equivalent of a minimum wage. The data will continue to be provided so we can monitor pay going forward and make adjustments when necessary. I'd also like to thank Michael Reich and James Parrott, as well as their students who spent countless hours poring over and running and rerunning numbers, and whose ingenuity and firm sense of right and wrong was invaluable. The TLC staff, who steadfastly have been committed to seeing this day come and ensuring that informed analysis is the basis of policy making, as it should be everywhere. I want to especially thank Celine and Fausto, to whom we are incredibly indebted.
I want to thank my fellow commissioners, who I'm extremely fortunate to work with. They ask questions, they poke, they prod, they're interested and concerned. They meet with groups, they hear them out, and they provide us with constructive edits. And most of all, their unified desire to help better the lives of everyone who's licensed by the TLC drives their each and every action, and it shows. They are unpaid, and they represent the finest of public service. Thank you. If I may, I would like to I would like to make a couple of comments. I want to say that I completely agree and support uh, Commissioner M Marino uh, in her efforts to have a minimum uh, percentage to go to the driver, and I think it's incumbent on us at the commission and, and to make sure that we keep the uh, TLC staff, the feet to the fire, the, uh, the chair to the uh, feet to the fire to make sure that a minimum 80% has happened sooner rather than later. Thanks, Bill. I do also feel very strongly that the drivers here today are the ones who represent the future of our city their children, their, their, their contributions to, uh, to, to the economy are extremely important. And I, I do want to applaud the, the activism on the part of the drivers and to, and to make sure you hold us accountable. Thank you. I'd like to make a statement as well. While no legislation or regulations are perfect, uh, this does serve as a first step in, in, in ensuring that drivers will earn a fair wage for the services they provide and also provide a higher degree of transparency with regard to how driver pay and related costs are calculated and measured. There is work to continue to do, and I know that all the members of this commission are, are hearing everything you've said over, over time, and we are working at, in that direction. This is a first step, and we should be happy about moving in that direction, so thank you. Um, I, I just want to echo every, um, basically what every single commissioner here has said, because I agree with, with all of you. Um, and it's truly, um, this is one of the most progressive city, um, or progressive state, I mean, it's run by Democrats, for goodness sake. So you think, right, that, uh, that we are, um, that we're gonna be taking care of people in general. So it does, it does take, um, it is a lot of politics involved, but I just wanna say that I'm very proud to be here because TLC is taking the first step. Today, it's taking the first step. It's not waiting for anybody else. It's not waiting for city council, it's not waiting for the state assembly, it's not waiting for the state senate, it's not waiting for Governor Cuomo to sign some legislation, it's not waiting for anybody else. TLC is taking the first step, so I'm very proud to do that and to be here today with everyone here. Okay, and next on the commission agenda are rules implementing a local law creating a new, high, new license for high volume for hire vehicle services. These rules were published in the city record on October 26, 2018 with a comment deadline of November 28th. Numerous written comments were received and have been provided to the commissioners. A public hearing was held on these rules on November 28th, 2018. Following the public hearing and as a result of staff comment, as a result of public comments and testimony, several changes were made to the rules including um, requiring that all records related to location of a vehicle be collected in an in-vehicle GPS-enabled device and removing some outdated references to the Taxi and Limousine Tribunal and replacing it with the Oath Hearings Division. Um, as local law requires, the final rule for commission action was posted on the TLC's website on November 29th and mailed to, and sent by the commissioners, sent by email to the commissioners on that date. All in favor? The high volume service rules passed unanimously. That brings us to the end of our um, vote section of the meeting, and I know there were a few commissioners who wanted to speak to topics that were raised around the congestion fee at our last meeting. 
Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, personally that uh, at last week's meeting, uh, the hearing, we, we heard very poignant testimony from many, many speakers, and I just wanted to let you know that it resonated with me personally, and I know it resonated with all of the commissioners sitting at this table. Uh, and we do understand the concerns that you had and do have uh, as, ha as to how the congestion pricing surcharge that's to go into effect in January will have a detrimental effect on the uh, drivers, especially those in the taxi industry. So we did uh, convey that message. I wanted to let you know that we did share that message with Albany. We will continue to share that message with the city elected officials as well. And I just wanted to share that you did resonate with us and we heard you and we will do everything we can to try to make sure that that is minimized, the detrimental effect is minimized as best as we can and what is in our power. So I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. Can I speak? I wasn't at the um, last meeting, but rest assured, I live streamed the entire thing. So I was here virtually and um, like my colleague, I was horrified by what I heard and the um, I'm horrified by the whole idea I think for the governor and the state legislature to blame congestion strictly on taxis is absurd in light of the high volume of um, online shopping and delivery trucks um, pedestrian plazas bike lanes I mean how you can possibly pin this yes. on taxi cabs yes. is ridiculous yes. 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 and we are going to do everything in our power limited or not um, rest assured to prevent this. I mean, there has been some talks of emergency rules. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I would support that. I, I will never vote for the congestion price and as it is, has been produced. I will never vote for it. I will steadfastly oppose it. I want to note a few things. Um, in London, taxis are exempt from congestion pricing. And here we're in a situation where the state is contemplating congestion pricing, but one sector um, is, pick, is singled out as the one that should bear the cost of congestion pricing at the outset. Um, I think anyone who lives and works in Manhattan knows we have a problem with congestion. Pricing is a way to control it. Um, but I wholeheartedly advocate for a comprehensive policy where you don't have one industry bearing the costs of congestion um, because we really don't know how that will work out. Will it actually deter people from bringing their personal cars in or will the price of for hire vehicles and taxis be higher now which will encourage people from bringing their, in, to bring their personal cars in? With so many questions left unanswered, I think the sensible thing is to postpone this until there's a comprehensive congestion pricing plan that affects all people who use the roads in Midtown Manhattan. So thank you. Um, and with no more business for today, I make a motion to adjourn. All approved. Thank you very much for your attendance.